Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll move on this listener right now in your gentle, loving, powerful, and merciful way as they listen to this message from All Nations Church in Tallahassee. Amen. It's Sunday, and I'm excited to be here. It's been, um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, but God is good, God is faithful, and I am excited to be here as always to share God's heart with you all as a church, as a body, here locally, worldwide. We believe God is doing something in his church. Am I by myself? He is doing something in his church. And he's not coming back for somebody. He's coming back for his body. And we want to make sure that we want his space for when we hear that trumpet, man, it's, t- it's time to get out of here. I am excited about all that God is doing. Listen, when they sang this song, Build Your Church, there was a line, there was a couple of words in that song that just really got me. And it says, he will never fail. Let me tell this side, maybe. He will never fail. I don't know if somebody has some situation in your life and you feel like, man, I don't know if he's going to come through, but he came through. I want to encourage you. If you're in a season of your life, I'm encouraging right now. He will never fail. He won't. He hasn't. He won't start now. And the only thing that he cannot do is what? Fail. And I want you to tell yourself, come on, say it out loud. He will never fail. Look at somebody on the side of you behind you and say, hey, just in case you didn't know, he will never fail. You don't know what that's doing for somebody. You know what don't work. You don't know where they are in their life. You don't know they may be in a situation where it feels like he's about to fail, but I want to encourage you. He will never fail. Wow. That's good news, right? Hey, can the pool family stand? Where's the pool family? The pool family right here. Stand, y'all. Hey, clap your hands for the pool family. They've been coming here faithfully. Um, they're just an amazing family, and I, and I want to, and I want to make sure. I, I, I say it right, um, but because there's a recording artist here in the house, a national recording artist, no pictures, no autographs, okay? No pictures, no autographs, uh, but her name is Angela Moss Poole. Angela, I believe that's you. Hey, clap our hands for her. Their God is doing something in the kingdom. She has amazing, amazing music here. Hey, if you want to get connected with her, connect with her right after her. You can go on YouTube, thousands of views. Thank you for all that you're doing for the kingdom. We love the Poole family. Clap your hands for the Poole family one more time. We are in a series called Advancing the Kingdom. Everybody say, Advancing the Kingdom. Everybody say, Advancing the Kingdom. Yes, we are advancing the kingdom. God is calling all of us in some way, shape, form, or fashion to push the kingdom along. Okay? But before we do that, I want to say, have my wife just raise your, just raise, you don't have to stand, just say hi to people. That's my wife, just in case y'all didn't know. I'm off the market. Come on, somebody. Here's a quick. uh, (laughs) I want to read this to you. A family decided to host some of their friends for dinner and invited them over. On the set date, their guests arrived and they all sat at the table. Before they started eating, the woman hosting the dinner turned to her six-year-old daughter and asked the little one if she would pray over the food. The little girl was shy and she didn't know what to say. And in response, the woman asked her daughter, just say what you hear mommy say. On hearing this, the girl closed her eyes, took a deep breath and bowed her head. And she said, and she proceeded to pray. Then she solemnly said, dear Lord, why did I invite all these people to dinner? Watch what you say around. Watch what you say around your children. This Sunday school teacher, I got one more since I'm hot today. I'm hot. I'm rolling. The Sunday school teacher asked, why is it so necessary to be be quiet in church? She asked her class. This bright girl replied, because people are sleeping. (laughs) Yeah, not this church, though. Not this church. Father, we thank you so much for all that you are about to do and all that you have already done. This is your church. You are building your church. And and the, the gates of hell shall not. I say it again, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Father, I thank you that you cover all of those who are part of building your church. And we pray that today you reveal wisdom and revelation in a way um, that we can see you in a brand new way, in a brand new light. In Jesus' name. Let everybody say, Amen. amen. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. 
Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. I'll be reading out of the Passion Translation. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, out of the Passage Translation. We're talking about building your church. Last week, Pastor Steve preached a message called Making Room. How many of you begin to make room? You got to make room for what's in your heart. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You got to make room. Jonathan McReynolds has a song. It says, I find space for what I treasure. I make time for what I want. You hear me? I choose my priorities and Jesus, you are my number one. I will make room for you. And we want to make sure that we're making room for God, all that God wants to do through us in the kingdom of God. This is what it reads. Jesus answered him, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart, with all your energy, with all of your being, and with every thought that is within you. Man, I like how it said that. With every passion that's in your heart. Today we're talking about being passionate about the kingdom of God. The title of this is called All In. Everybody say All In. It didn't say love the Lord with a little passion. It didn't say love the Lord thy God with a little part of your heart, with a little part of your being, with a little part of, of the energy that was within you, within you. No, he says love the Lord your God with all the passion that is inside of you. I understand that life has happened to all of us and sometimes life helps our passion dwindle a little bit. Am I right? Things happen. You lose things. You lose people. You lose loved ones. You lose jobs. You lose opportunities. Business deals go bad. Contracts go awry. Families separate. Things happen. And all of those things the enemy will try to use to kill your passion and make you blame God for everything that's happening in your life. I don't know if I'm by myself, but at one point of time in my life, I used to say, God, what is going on? All these things are happening. I feel like I'm missing. I feel like nothing's working out. But then I have to be reminded of the scriptures that Romans 8, 28 says, for we know that all things are working together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to write this thought down that a kingdom mindset says this, that God does not want to do something for you, but he wants to do something through you. See, that's the kingdom mentality because a lot of times as believers, we get this thing that, God, I want you to do this for me. I want you to do this for me. When are you going to come through for me? And he's up there saying, I don't want to do anything for you, but it's through what I want to do for you that something is going to happen for you. What is he trying to do through you that you've been resistant in the church? Not in just this church, but in his church. It's your passion that he's after. You remember when you first received Christ? Anybody remember that day? Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody remember? You remember? I remember the climate. I remember what the room felt like. I remember the smell of peppermints and chicken. Come on. I remember. It was New Year's Eve. You might have heard me tell this story for all of you who are new. Here you go. It was New Year's Eve. I'm sitting on the back of the pew. They're just finishing testimony service. When you came up in the church that I came in, you had testimony service. You know what testimony service is? You put a microphone right here on the front, and you said, "Who has God has been good to anybody in here today? Yes, Lord. Yes, Pastor. Come and tell about it. So you get people that come up to the microphone, and they start to say it, and it starts something like this. Giving out to God who is truly the head of my life. To all of the pastors, everybody in their respective places, and to all my father's children. It says, I'm happy to be here tonight to be saved, sanctified, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, and baptized with fire, and do speak in tongues as the Spirit gives me to utter. Deep down in my soul, yet excited about living for the Lord. I never said that. That's what they said. It's a whole script. You get up and people begin to testify about the goodness of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord. And then I can remember at the last end of the, end of the testimony, I wasn't a Christian. I was God conscious. I grew up in a Christian home to a degree. Pastor began preaching. Open your Bibles. And I can remember my legs just start to shake. I'm like, what's happening? 
Well, I went somewhere before church. I went to a party. It was New Year's Eve. So I said, maybe what I did was a little too much. My leg was shaking. I held that leg. The other leg was shaking. He didn't even get into the sermon yet. I can remember it was hot. They had radiators in the church and they just start kicking on. You know, when radiators kick on, it's boom, boom. They make these sounds. I can remember. Yeah, let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit really gets you, you can remember that day. My legs started shaking. I was sweating something like I'm sweating right now. But it wasn't, I, I don't know, I was scared too because I didn't know what was happening. So the, it, 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 while he's preaching, I'm making my way up the aisle. Only thing I can remember, like, what are you doing? You know, you watch The Simpsons and Homer's like, don't do it. What are you doing? What are you doing? But you can't stop your body from doing whatever he's doing. And I'm making my way up the aisle. And I get to the front and the preacher, and I'm bawling, crying, and I'm just dripping, crying. The preacher's like, what do you want? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. He was like, you don't know? He's like, what are you up for? I said, I don't know. He said, you want to give your heart to the Lord? I said, I think so. I said, what does that even mean? So before the sermon even gets started, I can remember. I, that moment, after that, I woke up, I was underneath, it was a pew. I don't know how I was six something at the time. I don't know how I made it underneath there without hurting myself, but I remember coming to no longer having desire for anything that I had desires for. Filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. Look, listen, I need you to get back because sometime in order to get the passion back, you have to go back to where it first started. You know, they have the song that says, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to where I first believed. Where did you first believe? What was it like for you? I can remember the moment that I became a Christian, the moment that they said something was happening at the church, I was there. You want me to move a chair? I'll move it. You want me to paint? I'll paint. You want me to vacuum? I'll vacuum. And I wasn't doing it for people. I was doing it because of the sheer passion of what Jesus did for me in my life that night. I could never be put out. I could never put out that fire. But we all know sometimes that that feeling might not last. And they say, hey, Brother Williams, can you come put the chairs up? Um, uh, I would, but I got something to do today. Okay, no problem. Hey, can you come help us cut the grass? Ah. 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 Uh. They always want me to do something at that church. They Every time they see me, they want me to serve. Sir, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you cut the grass? I don't think I'll be able to make it today. I'm just not feeling the best. Okay, no problem, no problem. Hey, can you come unlock the, the doors for me? Because, you know, you get a key and everything. When you Can you unlock? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it this Sunday. And then... When you finally decide to come, you want everybody to be excited that you showed up. That's not anybody in here. But I'm saying, it's talking about in the scriptures, it says, with every passion that you have, love the Lord, the God, Lord, the love your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all the energy you have. Can I ask you a question? Have you been giving him all the energy you have? Have you been giving him all the passion that you have inside of you? Have you made every reason not to be involved? Have you made every reason not to serve? Can I tell you something? You don't serve for me. You go from him. He's sending you to do these things. Where's your passion gone? Some time ago that you've lost your first love. Here is telling you, love the Lord God with every passion of your heart, with all the energy you have in every being and every thought that is within you. And there's some translations say, love the Lord your God with all your mind. Heart, soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your I don't feel like it. Your emotions. And when God saves you, he's coming after your emotions. The Holy Spirit gets in you 
And you don't live by I don't feel like it anymore. You don't live by I don't have time anymore. You heard the song. He says, I make time for what I want. I make time for what I want to do. Let me ask you a question. Does anybody in here make time for what they want to do? You going it's Sunday. Raise your hand. Do you make time for what you want to do? Huh? If you don't want to do something, you're not gonna you're not gonna do it. If you get that urge, and I always talk about if you don't feel like driving to take somebody, pick somebody up for church, you won't do it. But if you get hungry, you're gonna go. It. I'm talking to somebody here that got a hunger like me. You don't want to do what you want to do. But he says, with every passion that is within you, and I love the old songs, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to where I first believed. When I first said yes, when I first agreed and partnered with you, take a trip, church. Take a trip back in your mind to where you first lifted your hands in surrender and you first opened your heart to the word of God. And when you first said yes to the will of the Lord for your life, where were you? How were you feeling? And that is the passion that God wants again. That is desire that he's calling you to get back to the energy and the passion. Here, I want to give you seven ways to rekindle the passion in your heart. To fervor and to stir the fire of God within your heart. Number one, see him. S-E-E. How you see him is how you serve him. See See Christ more for all he is as you study about him in God's word, which leads me to the next point, seek. When you see him and he begins to unveil himself to you and he begins to release his glory upon you, that makes you hungry and thirsty, then that makes you seek him. Seek Christ more for all he is and ask, and ask for more of him in prayer, which leads you to savor. Oh, taste. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? Where my Bible people at? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. They said it tastes, the song say, oh, it tastes just like honey in the rock. That's the church I came from. I don't even know where they get all these songs from. But have you, if you taste and see him and taste him, you can never turn away from him. He says, you see him, you seek him, and when you seek him, you want more of him, and you savor him. Savor Christ for all he is as you sing praises of him to him, which leads to speak to him. Once you savor him, man, we're talking about intimacy. We're talking about a time of worship. I can't sing worth a lick, but oh, I sing all the time. Isn't it the people that can't sing all, at all that sing all the time? Come on, all my can't singing people, we going to sing all the time. I walk around my house and I'm singing. And my wife was just, oh, she's like, oh, sing, honey. Sing. Sing. It is not an encouragement. It's the sing. It's like, oh, just, just keep singing. Sing. That's how you're, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. You're seeing him for who he is. You seek him because you saw him for who he was. And, you, and you're savoring him like a good piece of meat that's been seasoned. Good Lord. I don't, I don't eat for pork. But when the chicken is seasoned real good. Oh, Holy Ghost. When that chicken season or whatever meat you decide to eat. It's seasoned real good. And, some, and when it's seasoned real good, you don't need the sauce. And you bite it and you just close your eyes. Wow. Wow. And you're savoring every single bite because it's so good and it was taken care of. And that's what happens when you have a passion and you throw that wood in the fire. That's the word of God. You begin to read and you begin to taste and you begin to read of all the things that he's done in the past and all of the promises that's connected to you in the future and you begin to savor his presence. Savor Christ more for all he is and as you sing praises to him, you speak to him and speak, for, speak of Christ for all he is and as you teach fellow believers about him which leads to show. 
at some point. You come out of that intimacy to show other people, show Christ more for all he is. And as you imitate him in the word and indeed, which leads to serve. Everybody say serve. You serve Christ for more of all he is. And as you minister to others in his name, which leads to share. Share Christ for more of all he is. And as you point others to the redeemer, you see him. You seek him. You savor. You speak to him. You show, you serve, and you share. When you see him first, we want to see more of Christ's greatness and glory as he reigns at God's right hand. You begin to get a practical view of who Jesus is. A practical and valuable starting point is to take advantage of what God is doing in the lives of other people. And as he's doing it in the lives of other people, you begin to rejoice with other people because you know if he did it for them. I don't know if I got a church this morning. If he did it for them, guess what? He's coming down to your address too. He's not far from your street. He's not far from your house. And the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Hey, God, but you got a new car? Thank you, God. You know why? Because mine is on the way. You got a new house? Yeah, yeah. You know how church people are. Oh, she got a new house. I mean, it's a nice little house. You know when we put little on the front of it, you just, that's a nice little car. That's a nice. She had a nice little wedding. We have to, <laughs> we have to learn to begin to rejoice with them that rejoice. We have to learn to get a passion for when other people are being successful and winning. Can I tell you something? <clears throat> We're in a generation that we subscribe a lot of passion to going after your dreams. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be an influencer. I want to be an influencer. Yes. I want to influence people. I want to make my mark. But we've misplaced our passion. I'm not against being an influencer because I believe that I'm one. I'm not against of promoting entrepreneurship because I believe in it. But the problem with it all is that we get so busy wanting to influence people. God is like, if you're not passionate for me, be for the influence. If you're not hungry after me before the entrepreneur endeavor, what makes you think I'll promote you to not promote me? We get passion for what we want to be passionate about. You know how it is when you first date. It's like you ain't have no friends. It's like you don't have no friends no more. You know how it is. You get somebody, and you don't hang out with your friends no more. You, you're suddenly available all the time. Where are you going? Oh, we're going out. Oh, what you doing? We're hanging out. Oh, what you doing? We want to go out. But before, it's like, hey, come go to the movie. I'm tired. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like doing this. But here it is. When you love something, you get passionate for it. When something gets in your heart, you get passionate for it. See, God is not really concerned about promoting people. He's more concerned about promoting his kingdom. That's why we often question, why does that person get to do it? They don't look, they don't. Why do they get to do it? Why does he get to do it? Why does this, they've done this, they walked through divorce, they had this, they did, they don't, they don't need to be doing that. How should they do it? Why do they get a chance to talk about God? Why, are, why is he on the platform? Why is she on the platform? They've done this. They've done that. They've done this. That's why we don't understand why people that we don't pick and are not our picks get to do what God has called them to do because God picks those. 
God picks those people who have a past. He gets those people who have hard times. God gets those people who walk through divorce, who walk through foreclosure, who walk through business failure, who was a cheater, who was a stealer, who was a thief. God picks the people he chooses because those are the people that promote his kingdom. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. It's your church. God promotes people and things that are passionate about his agenda. And who don't have their own hidden agenda within his kingdom agenda. That's not us though. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's not us. We don't, we don't want to be, we don't want to get on the platform just to be seen. We want, we really want to do this for souls. See, God is looking for people who don't care about this platform. Let me tell you about this. I was doing what I'm doing now in grocery stores. Not just, just not as loud. I was doing and praying for the sick on street corners before I ever had a microphone. Yeah, let me say that again. I was, I was praying for the sick, seeing miracles happen, just walking to the bus stop. Yeah. How you get up here? God put me here. You don't deserve to be here? Nope. I don't. But God is looking for people who don't deserve to be where he put them because he knows that he can trust them with the place that they won't become. Come on, somebody. God is looking for people who have a passion for him to live passionate lives for him. How do you get that passion? You got to keep seeing him. You got to keep seeing him. Listen, you can, you can sing, you can preach, but you can have no passion. Don't confuse outward passion for inward relationship. I can be big and I am, I mean, I can be, I am, <laughs> I am big, but I can be. <laughs> You know, well, well, my hands and kick. That's that's something on the outside. But can I tell you what you see on the outside is something that's burning in my heart. It's here. He does the work first and outside is where you see the manifestation, what he's doing in here. You're talking about passionate. You're talking about having a desire for his church and his people. Is the fire gone out for you? You don't have to raise your hand. Has the fire dwindled for you? Has coming to church been something that you're just checking off a box? Is singing on the worship team is just something? Is it something you do? Is playing instruments just something like, yeah, I'll play? No, I remember I used to play the drums. I started on the drums. Even before I started singing, I started playing the drums. I couldn't play at all. I mean, I couldn't play. But you know, when you grew up in the church that I grew up in, it don't matter what you can do. They just, come boy, that's what, boy, play, play. I can remember when it happened, just like it was yesterday. I was just coming, serving. And I figured probably, well, he serves, he participates in everything else. Sit down. The church was high. People, people, ooh, mm, 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 people. You know what that is? That's called a, a, a dance. People are dancing in the spirit. And they, whoo, and they dance like that, right? And they dance like that, and they're getting excited, and they didn't have no beat. And you know, this is a multicultural church. So black folk, we, we like beat. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a lot of my Caucasian brothers and sisters, if any. So we, there was no music, eh? So they said, get on the drums. So I'm like, I got the Holy Spirit. He going to teach me how to play. Guess what? He ain't teach me how to play that day. Because you know when you grow up in those, if you're not doing good, they're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. They, the whole church just stopped and it was like, uh-uh. Then they say, we don't need no music. And yeah, that's why that song was invented, because I was playing, and they said, they don't need no music. <laughs> but guess what I did? I kept going. I kept playing. Not on Sundays, though. 
I kept going. I kept playing. I kept playing. Until one day, I actually got good. And they said, well, you ready for a Sunday? I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for a Sunday. And they weren't sure if I was ready for a Sunday. Because, you know, practice is a lot different from game day. So I get on. I can remember. I was excited. But I was nervous at the same time. The church. And, and you can play regular songs. You know, I could play regular songs, but it's something about playing that music. I, get, I got confused. And I said, Lord, please don't let me get confused today. But again, when you have passion, you'll push past what you don't understand. When you're passionate about serving God, you don't really care if you can or you can't do it. You just want to find yourself being available. So I said, okay, I'm just, whatever, Lord, I'm just going. And I was, boom, boom. so what I did was, I said, I want to start watching their feet. And if I can watch their feet, then I know that's what my foot is supposed to be doing. So you know when you grow up in the church, they. So I said, oh, I think I got it. And I saw that foot, and I was like. And you know when the music get good, right? Everybody look at you like. I got nervous, right? I got nervous, but I just kept my foot going. And that means like, oh, we finna really get into it. And then I saw their hand like this. So I took my hand, I was like, ah. they was like, ah. And all of a sudden, I, I can't really tell you what happened. I just opened up and I mean, I began to play and it, and it made sense. What am I saying? Passion will make up for error. Being passionate for God. It, it, will over, it will overwhelm and, and, and cover in places that, listen, he's just like, this boy really trying to serve me. Let me help him. Let me help. Did you know what I did? I'll go home. And it wasn't, I didn't even practice drums. I would just go be with him. I can remember being 18, 19 years old, telling people, man, I ain't going out today. What you mean you're not going out today? I said I'm not going out today. I'm being with Jesus. They're like, you doing what? I said I'm being with Jesus. So I go in my room. I put on Fred Hammond. Give me a clean huh? to see you like a I mean, I would. I mean, I'm in that like, ooh. I'm talking about so good. Have you ever just been in his presence and you walk out of there like, what is going on? Where have I been? Give me a clean heart. I mean, I was in there like, you know, when you're worshiping by yourself, you do whatever. You just, that's, that may be some, that may be a reason that a lot of people don't do publicly what they do privately. I get it. Because I was in there like, Man, and I mean, I was crying on the floor, but I, when I got out, I knew that I had been with Jesus. I saw him. I went to seek him, and I savored him, and I connected with him, and I related to him, and that was my life. But life, things happen, and you don't be with him as much. You, you stop praying, and then you say, you know what? I'm going to pray on my way to work. I'm going to pray on my way to work. When you used to get up before you had to go to work and spend a little time with them, you know, that's why the Bible says, I love those who seek me early. I love those who want to spend time with me. I mean, he a good on the go, Jesus, right? But oh, when you take time, when you wake up before you even answer an email, pick up your phone. Before you even talk to anybody, you say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I, I just want to talk to you before my day gets started. Before I take on any meetings. Before I reply to any texts. Before I get on Instagram, social, TikTok. I want to say, good morning, Holy Spirit. How are you? <laughs> I want to spend time with you just to carve out. Because listen, when you spend time with him on the top half, it's like giving him a tithe. You give him 10% of your day and he blesses the 90. 
<clears throat> you wake up instead of saying, you know what? Oh, I got 10 more minutes. I got to get out of here. I got to go. I'll pray when I get in the car. And guess what? You're not praying when you get in the car. You listen to music. You put on your foundation. You put on your eyeliner. Come on, somebody. You're getting ready for work. Brothers, you're, you're brushing your hair. You're moosing it up. So we're a multicultural church, so I got to think of everything. Putting what? We're putting what? We're doing it all. And then we say, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do better. Then tomorrow you sleep in. Man, can you imagine? Can you imagine Holy Spirit sitting beside your bed every morning waiting on you to wake up? Just, just imagine with me because that's the way I, I see things. I see life. Imagine the Holy Spirit while you sleep, eagerly anticipating you to wake up. Oh, I can't wait till they get up. I want to be with them. I want to talk to them. I can't wait till they talk to me. And he's waiting. He's, he's excited. He's grooming your room. He's being around you. He's giving you sweet, sweet, sweet peace. And then when you wake up, you don't even acknowledge him. That's why it says it grieves the Holy. Can I tell you, he has feelings too. He rejoices over us. He grieves. Can you imagine how he feels when that passion is not reciprocated? You can't match his passion on the cross. But what you can do is try your best to pay him back for all he's done. You don't have the money. You don't have the means. You don't have the influence. You don't have the power. But all he wants is a life that's yielded to worshiping him for the rest of your life. You don't have the finances to pay him back for what he did on the cross. You don't have the means. You don't have the wherewithal. But he was like, I know you can't do that. But at least you can do is worship me. At least you can do what I called you to do, which was a Levitical priest. He said, just love on me. How you keep that passion going? You love on him. You love on him. He said, my only desire is that you be one with me as I am with my father. Can you imagine what happens to your passion when your level of intimacy grows with him? When you come here, you say, man, I can't wait to be with my brothers and sisters. I can't wait to see what the Holy Spirit is going to do. I can't wait because I know he's in the room. Because you know what happens on Saturday night? Holy Spirit, he's here. He's here working the room. He's here setting the atmosphere. He's here making your, he's making your seat ready. He knew where you're going to sit. He know you love your same seat. He know where you want to sit. He's waiting on you to sit in your same seat. Everything, he's anointing everything. He's making everything ready. And when you come in, we don't even really acknowledge him. When the worship starts, we're just like. How great is our God. This song says, sing with me. Sing with me. How yeah, that means you have to sing with me. They're inviting you to open your mouth. You know, it's this one thing on Instagram, and they had this, they had this uh, phrase where people say these phrases, and somebody from the platform, they say, come on, open your mouth. And then they had this picture of this lady. She was like, <laughs> true story. <laughs> open your mouth, open your mouth. But can I tell you, in a time of corporate, it's a time where you bring your fire and your fervor and your seeking and your savory and all that you've been doing in your private time and you bring it to a corporate space. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. You bring it to a corporate space and when you connect with my worship and when I connect with your worship, then I connect with your worship and then you connect with my workers and then online comes in and when it connects with our worship, something is about to happen in this place. Something is about to happen because he's looking for passionate hearts to fall on. Have you ever seen you know, hospitals who have those helicopter landings? They normally have an X or you see people when the plane lands, there's somebody pulling, calling the plane in. It's just like the Holy Spirit. If there's no landing pad for him, he won't come. He won't do can you tell me this? I'm not the smartest man in the world. But with this many people in the room, don't you think that the Holy Spirit wants to heal somebody? 
Don't you think that the Holy Spirit wants to deliver some people? Just, just humor me. With this many people in the room, don't you think the Holy Spirit wants to fall on somebody and wreck their lives in a way that they can never come back from? Don't you think with this many people in the room, that increases the level of opportunity for the Holy Spirit to do some phenomenal things? But if we don't pull on him, if we don't provoke him, and we just come as if, I'm here, check the box. And then you say, you know what? I don't know what it is. I come one way and I leave the same way. Who, 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 whose fault is that? The Holy Spirit is looking for passionate people to continue to ignite the flame in our hearts. You know, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. Who's the sacrifice? Huh? Who, 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 who's the sacrifice? You. Me. Fire does not come to an altar with no sacrifice. A lot of times we come to church and we put everybody else on the altar except us. Here it is. Here's my son. Fire him up. You fire him up. Here's my boss. Blow him up. Here's my spouse. Here's the altar, Lord. I'm putting them on there. Here's this. Here's that. Here's my in-laws. Here's everybody else on the altar except for me. Everybody else needs to be here except for me. Lord says, I'm not going to do anything with anybody you're putting on here. Until you lay your self. Until you lay your body. Say that. You looking for fire? You looking for glory? He says, I want to do something through you first. People want to see what's happening in your life before they buy into me. People want to see the fire you carry before you tell them there's fire available to them. See, I got an attitude. You want people to catch fire. You want your kids to worship, but you don't lift your hands. You want your kids to be on fire with the Holy Spirit. But where's your fire? You want your kids to say a prayer and they can only repeat what you said. Why did I invite all these people to dinner? (laughs) Listen, God is after the fire and the passion in our hearts. Here it is. Number one, see him. Number two, seek him. Number three, savor him. Number four, speak to him. Number five, show him. Number six, you serve him. Number seven, you share him. Let's stand up on our feet all over the building. Haley, if you can come. Maybe you're here. I'm not going to invite you up to the front. It's just we're going to do this from where we stand. Maybe you're here and you're like, hey, man, I I don't have passion for him because I don't even, I haven't acknowledged him as my savior. Maybe you're here and you heard this message. You say, you know what, man, I never heard it that way before. And and Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And and the only thing he asked you is to give you, to give it, give your life to him. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died in Rome, he said, you'll be saved. And you might be out there and you're like, man, I have never confessed Jesus to be the Lord of my life. And I want this passion you speak of. I want this fire you're talking about. I want this excitement about you, that you're talking about. I want this kingdom to be real to me. Maybe you're out there and you say, you know what? I want to give my heart to the Lord. All eyes are closed. 
You say, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want him to be the Lord of my life. I want him to take my life and I want him to use my life for the rest of my life. Hey, if that's you, you said, I want to know this Jesus and I want to get to know him and I want him to be in my life and I want to know this fire and this excitement. If that's you on the count of three, just raise your hand. One, two, three, raise your hand. Ah, I see that hand back there. See that. Hey, pastor, I want to know this Jesus. I've heard about him. I heard people talk about him. I heard my mom. I heard my cousins. But I want him to be my Jesus. Lift your hand real high. That's you. I want him to be mine. I want him to be mine. Hey, guys, listen, please keep those hands up. With that same hand, I want you to put some faith to your feet. Listen, I want to do this because this is going to give the enemy a black eye. If you have your hand up, you say, I want to give my heart to Jesus today, make your way down here. Clap your hands as they come. I just want to shake your hand. I want to meet you. Come down here. I saw your hand. I see. Hey, brother, I see you. Clap your hands as he's coming. The Bible says we rejoice over one soul. If your hand was up and you say, I want to give my heart to Jesus, come on down here. Come on down here. People coming. Keep clapping. Don't get tired because this could be your cousin. This could be your brother. This could be your sister. This could be your mom. This can be your dad. Whoever you've been praying for, they coming. We're going to keep clapping. As long as you're coming, we clap. As long as you're coming. God just not getting one. He getting the whole family. If you're still out there and you raise your hand, it's time for you too. You say, it's time for me to come home. I'm tired of being the way that I am. I'm tired of living the way that I've been living. And I want a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, come on. We got space. It's the greatest decision that you would ever make in your life. Doesn't matter where you're from matter where you've been. It just matters is where you're going. And because of the decision that you two are making right now, this is the best decision and it's going to take care of every other decision that you will make for the rest of your life. Maybe you're out there and you, can, and you walk this walk before and this is all we want to do. Let's lift our hands and we're going to pray this prayer with them so they don't feel alone. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all of my sin. Today, I make a declaration that I'm giving you my life for the rest of my life. You died for me, now I live for you. I'm yours. I'm saved. If you said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the kingdom of God. Listen, we want to love on you. We want to get connected with you. My brother right here, you and your beautiful babies, y'all follow him, y'all follow him. We want to get some information from you, and we want to get connected with you, and you just follow them right there. Clap your hands for them one more time. You made it to the end of the message, and now what? Is God leading you to make a change? Are you needing a good church home where you can grow and help others grow as you fulfill your part in the body of Christ? Then we invite you to join us at All Nations Church on Sharer Road in Tallahassee, a multicultural church founded on the truth of God's Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. Our Sunday morning service is at 1030 and Wednesday night service at 7, plus youth group and kid power and small groups and more. For more information, visit our website, allnationstallahassee.com.